Greetings YouTube, I've decided to go back to square one with this thing and concentrate on getting the blade set up perfect before I attach the new gear that I have purchased. Yo, what's up YouTube? Greetings, it's Monday the 16th of May 2022 and now I've got the parts, this thing's going to come down and we're going to try and sort it out. On a positive note, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I can start doing stuff myself again, like this. So that's good. As long as I can have a nice rest in front of my heat lamps after I've had a bit of physical exertion, then that's all good. So that bodes well for the future. It's still not right, but my right arms, my right arm and shoulders still a bit of a mess, but I can use it in spurts if that makes sense. I can't use it for hours and hours, but I can use it in spurts. I'm gonna be now. It's leaning over to the left slightly. You can see if I put some pressure on the wire. See the considerable movement. Anyway, I'm not really helping things, am I? On with the taking down. So we swap it over and we pump. get a good view of the shenanigans the motor somebody was talking about a pulley and I have thought about a belt and pulley before maybe this center channel of the motor would be a good place to have a pulley but I don't know I suppose you'd have to weld something on here but anyway for now what's really got to happen is all this has got to come off uh, that's broken but I'm gonna try and keep it uh, these need hacking off really so that I can put the blades forward more or I could keep them on and yes, I'll suppose it's going to evolve as I take it apart, but there's enough wind at the minute to be generating some electricity, so we need to get this brand new shiny gear on and get generating some. So the plan might be to end up with this bit around the front here, so then I don't have to take all this off. Uh, it will be less of a mission getting the shaft off the bearings than it will, would be removing these, so I'm going to try with that. Let's do it. I just realised it recorded the whole lot in time lapse, me taking all the stuff off, never mind. So we have the drive shaft off and I'm just basically going to spray a load of WD-40 on all these and then give it 10 minutes and we'll try and take them off. Uh, there's a couple of bits on the drive shaft that will require attention. That where I hacked something off. And here where it's been welded together, I welded this extra bit on. So that may cause problems. There's a random hole there. Not a big dealio. And that's there. So the main thing I've got to do is get that one off. This one can stay on there. And that one can come off. Hey, sweet. Now I'm going to try and knock this one up to about here, which is where it'll need to be in the grand scheme of things. A bit more of the old uh, Juicy Lucy. So we've got this dubious bit here. That might be a good place for the bearing to fit over. Uh, I just think if I'm going to do it in any, any place, it might be there. And then the second one is about that far away and then the new gear will go in there like a beauty the blades will stick off the front quite a bit more because you think about it the blades were the blades were here and the front of the turbine was here so that's definitely going to be the easiest way to do it next job and my drill press is broken which is a bit of a bummer but i have got a very very nice set of little part side step drill bits which are amazing which we can use to put a hole in then it'll be weld one of those on one side and may well go for one on the other side. And then we'll modify these uh, grub screws because they're crap. But people, I do get people asking me why I don't use bicycle chain, but it just isn't good enough for this. I am maybe up for the idea of using pulleys, 
uh, which is something I may well look into, but for now, <clears throat> I'm going to stick with the chain. Also, I did mention this before, but this had come loose. So if you can see that moving, and even though it's only a tiny bit of movement, it's not what you want, is it? What I'm going to do is to just put that on the turbine for a minute and see how it checks out size-wise. So I'm just trying to think of the easiest way of doing that. Four nuts. And let's let this collar down a bit. Oh, let's tighten this up. Roughly where we want it. And then get the bolts in. Now let's get the top one in. Come on. Well, I've just realised I've been putting it on the wrong way round. So, unfortunately. I have to come clean here. I think I've been misinforming you the whole time because there's no way. I thought that one on there was 20 tooth, but it isn't. That's got to be 26 or 28. When we, I'll go grab the 20. And if you can see there, definitely a fair bit smaller. So we're going to be going from a 20 on the drive shaft to a 26 or a 28, so that's interesting. That does take a bit of turning that motor, but the reason it takes a bit of turning is because it's got plenty of juice in it, if, just a case of extracting it. Sweet, this will be moved back a little so that the spindle gear, sorry, the spindle gear can probably fit over this bit, but all I want to do for now is put the blades back on and see if they catch, I think they're catching the wind better being in this more advanced position. Right, which one's which? I need them, I need them. Right, this is the frontal assault. Ah. There's the hole that the blade bolt fits through. That needs to be about there, or certainly an inch or two back. But for now, it's gonna be good enough. Uh, Balticus. Done it out. Right. Now I need to tighten up the grub screws on the bearing housings. At least a couple of them. All the bearings aren't in the centre. I've done that for now. Let's just see what happens, shall we? One collar. Two collars. That hole for the rear blades is in the perfect position, it's fine. Need to make sure we put them facing the right way. There's the hole. Ah, oh, the bloody bolt ain't undone. This little one now shouldn't be this much fanning about. I don't know if they just fall flat on its face. See you what, this could rip Van Winkle. This could rip Van Winkle. Let's get it up. Actually, I need to try and sort out some wobbliciousness. I've got to reduce that chain friction somehow because she is a beauty. Even though she looks like some steampunk ratly old steam railway engine. She is still a beauty. It's actually picking up the wind. Yeah. 
sweet. Here's a view from behind. But that bodes very well indeed. You can see the clearance. Whoa. You can see the clearance there. I'd say from the front of the turbine to the blade setup is about 10 to 12 inches. Whereas before it was right up close. And I'd say it's about an equal length. I'd say that's 12 to 14 inches that side. But you know, it's, it's lying on its side and it's catching the wind very well. So, see there is a slight wobble where I presume it's not perfectly centered, but I'm gonna stick it up on the tower now and we'll see what happens. Actually, first I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. I don't wanna to get too close to that. The other thing I need to sort out is the wobble here. Uh, fundamentally, because it's very hard to get metal that fits inside each other perfectly cleanly. Uh, but I've got a few ideas on how to do that. Woo! Spinny things in the sun. Hey, it is going crazy ass. It's going really fast. So cool. Anyway. Now it's really ripping. I'm going to film the other end because that's got to be more interesting than what. I can see I've changed the setup and it seems to be running better, more evenly, but we're still getting a little bit of wobble, so I actually think a weight on the back will sort that out and it'll be perfectly balanced. So I'm going to try that and then if that looks good, can start drilling the hole to put the gear cog on. See, it's running pretty nicely, not very windy today. Sweet, onwards and upwards. That may be a better angle so you can see how much further forward it is because the blades were slammed right on the front. So I'm gonna get that weight on and uh, tell you what else I need to do at the top of the tower. So this time I've got it down. I'm going to change the angle of this so it's tighter, so it's flatter. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is put some weight on the back of the tail this is where I've got a problem. One thing I think I can do is drill some holes and put a nut and have a flat uh, bolt that goes through and then just tightens it up a bit. It will still have to give it enough clearance to move round, but that might help. I have cut out a couple of tails which can go on the end here, maybe when my mate comes to help. There's one for this side and one for that side. So yeah, the purpose of this is just to try and get the blades in the best position running sweetest and then we can combine the electric motor. You could have some kind of roller attached to here, couldn't you really? Uh, you'd want to keep the water out, but if you had a roller that was the perfect size to match up against here that was rubber, that's an idea I'm interested in. So yes, I'm going to do that and then I'll report back. I think actually that's going to work. It's just kind of a, you know, one of those corner edging shelving strip things that's about two inches square. Uh, and that actually reduces the amount of play quite a lot. And you get some cable ties on there and it means it's not uh, where, where it's uh, where it's coming into contact with the top of the tower to provide the stability, it's quite shiny. And if you think about it, it's only making contact with a tiny little bit down the middle and the pressure's kind of spread out. I hope that makes sense. And then the 10 kilo weight is going to go on the back and then I'll have a look and see if we need anything else here. But we need cable ties here. So I'm going to go find some of them. That's that bodge for now. Uh, need something better, but just want to keen to see how the weight works which is about 10 kilos off an old weight stack. I'm hoping it creates a better balance and then we'll see how the blades catch the wind and how much vibration there is, etc. So it's still pretty low wind and it seems to be spinning and it doesn't seem to be bouncing about at all. Not that it's going fast, but 
very little wind. It's good. It's very good. A tiny bit of a wobble, but that'll go when the guide ropes are done up. But that looks that's looking better for a more stable design. Just need to get that motor spinning. Yeah, boy!